Okay, well, that's the total momentum. This is the only thing that's allowed to sort of cross over this line here. So only this is allowed to cross over here. Now, if this was in two dimensions, let's say I had this person here going, oh, I don't know, I mean, I could have them going northeast and this person southwest or something like that. All I would have to do then, you might think it's really complicated, but it's not so bad. I would just figure out the X component of the skier, and then I would figure out the Y component of the skier. So I would break this up into components. I would do the same for the X part of B's momentum. I would take the Y part of B's momentum. And then the total momentum, well, I could break it up then and say, well, the total X is going to be something, and the total Y is going to be something. And that total X comes over here, the total Y comes over here. But this is only 1D, so we're going to keep it nice and simple. Now these two objects here, the skier and the snowboarder, afterwards they stick. So we need to figure out which way that they go. Well, we've got the skier and the snowboarder, so we've got sort of A and B. So somehow they're sort of crossed, maybe their skis are tangled, and they're probably really angry at each other. But um, at this point right here, they're going to be moving off in this direction. Why is it that direction? Because the total momentum is north. So I know they're going to move off uh, into the north direction because this was a 1D simple example and the result was north, then I know they're going to move north. So how fast do they go? Well, I know the total momentum. I know that P total is 581 kilogram meters per second north. And that total momentum is going to equal, well, what's going on in this situation where they're stuck together? It's like there's one mass going at one velocity. So I'm going to say mass of A plus mass of B. Because the two of them are sort of stuck together, their mass, remember, because P equals mV normally. So this mass becomes... Know that so this little m here becomes m a plus m b because they're not just one mass and one mass together now when they've sort of stuck together because it's an inelastic collision because they stuck together then they just have they act as if they're just one mass one mass that's just obviously the sum of their two so it's going to be m a plus m b and all that's going to be times the velocity that they're going to have now the goal is basically just to find the velocity well, that's pretty easy then. If I want just the velocity, well, I have the velocity, I have that 581 equals ma plus mb times v. If I want v by itself, I can take 581 and divide it by ma plus mb. So actually, in this case, it's that easy. So if I do this then, it's going to be, well, 581 divided by um, 81 plus 70. Okay, so that right there is what I need to do. But what I just want to point out to you, though, is just that um, it's important when you're looking at these kinds of situations to take your time and think very carefully if these two objects are sticking together or if they are not sticking together. Okay, this is, I think, really key importance here. So in this case, because they're sticking together, then it made this situation a lot easier. So let's actually just solve for the final velocity. So the final velocity is going to be, well, 581, let's see, um, we have 81 plus 70, that's going to be 151. And I just need to do that on my calculator. So I want 581, hey, I already had that on my calculator, that's nice. Divide that by 151, and I get an answer of 3.8 meters per second. So I could say, therefore, that that's my answer right here. It's going to be 3.8, well, approximately 3.8 meters per second, and it's going to be north. That is my final answer. This is it. So these kinds of questions may look really tough. And in fact, they do require some thinking because, I mean, it takes a few steps to get here. Right? I mean, I think this, this is the challenge of these kinds of questions, is that it does take a few steps, but my key thing to do is to figure out, even if it's 1D or 2D or 3D, I always, first of all, start by putting a little dotted line. I say before and I say after. And I figure out everything I can before. So in this case, I figure out you know the total momentum of A. That's only because it was in one dimension, so I didn't really care. If it was in two dimensions, keep in mind, I would say PAX. And I'd say P-A-Y. And if it was in three dimensions, P-A-Z, and so on.
And then I would do the same thing for the snowboarder, figure out all those pieces, and then know that the total. So the total is just, well, the vector addition of these. Remember, that just means you have to take care of the directions. You have to account for the fact that they go in opposite directions, or maybe they're in the same direction. Then you would just add them. And then this total momentum is then used over here to the right. And it all depends on the situation. So if they're stuck together, well, then it's actually pretty easy because they're just one object moving with a one mass and one velocity. Now, the one mass is just the sum of all these objects over here and times the one common velocity that they all move together with. Had this been in 2D or 3D, remember, I would have just broken it up and said total, P total X would have been something. And then I would just work in the X direction over here. And I'd say P total Y, then I'd work in the Y direction over here. And when I was done, then I would add up those X's and Y's and make a total vector with a total direction. This would get more complicated because my direction would actually have an angle. I'd have to say they go up, uh, I don't know, north and then uh, 50 degrees east from there. Maybe that was the case. But in this one, because it was only one dimension, that actually made it fairly straightforward. And again, conservation of momentum is all about the total momentum before equals the total momentum after. It doesn't just work for linear momentum. It turns out angular momentum works the same way. And although the equations look a bit more complicated, it explains why someone who's a figure skater, you know, can, uh, can spin around, you know, when they, when they sort of twirl around in a circle. It turns out that uh, if they start their circle um, with their arms extended, then they're going to have a certain angular momentum. So what they do in order to spin faster, they just bring in their arms. And it turns out that, uh, well, that changes the radius, and that means the speed has to increase in order to keep the momentum the same. So that's kind of a neat thing. So actually figure skaters and people who do such things, they actually, although they maybe don't care about calculating the values, they know something inherently about uh, conservation of angular momentum. In this case, that we're just dealing with linear momentum, which means straight lines, so it's a lot simpler to look at.